You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to more of the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou, and today on this June 2nd, 2022, we are breaking down the Buffalo Bills and giving them a grade for their 2022 NFL draft class, one of the stronger draft classes from this season. I'm really excited to break these guys down because there is a litany of really good players here in this group. So my Bills fans, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you comment down below who is your favorite pick of this draft class. Who are you most excited to see coming out of such a strong group of players here? But let's go ahead, no no more messing around, let's talk some Buffalo Bills, because this is a really exciting group. Now we'll start with day three, we'll move into day two, and then jump into day number one, and we'll wrap up with a final grade. So make sure you stick around to the very end here so you see what they get. With the very last pick that they had in the draft, in round number seven, pick number 231, they drafted Balin Spector, the linebacker out of Clemson here, an instinctive player who's more often than not, always in the right position, at the right place, at the right time. Really good fundamentals. I mean, he's praised for his fundamentals from scouts around, and he's a former safety, so his athletic ability, fairly good, and more speed than most linebackers here. He is a little bit smaller because of the fact that he's just not, he's, he used to be a safety. He's not necessarily a a prototype linebacker per se. He does have average coverage range, which makes sense why he swapped from safety into a more linebacking type of role. And despite the fact that he has experience at safety and he did evolve into a linebacker eventually through his college career, he's just a, he's an average tackler. So there are some things about him that are there as negatives. But I mean, when you look at what he does, a very effective player with the limited opportunities that he gets here and there. I like what he brings to the table. This is probably the weakest pick in the draft class, and it's still a pretty good, It's I'd say about average selection, I guess you could say, in the draft altogether in the seventh round here. Balen Spector's someone who, while he may not make the roster, if he does make the roster, he's like man 51, 2, or 3, and he's a solid depth piece at the linebacking corpse. And you have some fairly effective linebackers there already in Buffalo for him to learn from. This is a good opportunity for him to learn from those guys. Matt Milano, anybody? But overall, I really like this pick. I think it's a solid average selection for round 7. A good depth piece to add. I gave it a C. Again, solid pick, solid player. He has some things he needs to work on, but he brings some strong, like I said, strong fundamentals, very instinctive. He seems to always find himself in the right position. So with the bad, there is the good, very average selection here, especially so late in the draft. Then you're going into round number six, pick number 209. We have Luke, and I believe it's Tan Tanuta, offensive tackle out of Virginia Tech. This guy also gets himself a C, monster of a man, 6'8", 319 pounds, experience at both of the tackle positions, so he has a little bit of versatility to his game. You can move him around the O-line if you need him to. He is solid athletically, but there are some concerns about his overall play strength and balance and core strength. The guy is so big, it's hard for him to keep his legs completely underneath him at times. He ends up struggling with leverage because of that, and he also has like below average lateral movement for what some people would like to see, at the offensive tackle position from what I'm reading based off the scouts. Uh, so again, this is another one of those picks where it's an average selection, good depth piece, I guess you could say. I gave it a C. He's not somebody who's gonna, you know, break the doors off and you know blow up and show everybody what he was made of that he, that they overlooked him and everything. But he is someone who could definitely evolve into a good like rotational offensive lineman, someone to plug in and go when when needed if injuries happen or you know it, it, just a solid rotational guy, I guess you could say altogether. Again, this picks a C, and these first two selections that I went over, these were the worst picks. It only gets and and, and I say worst picks in like a good way, I guess you could say because it only gets better from here with how crazy this draft class was for the Buffalo Bills. As we start to move ourselves up, then we have ourselves Christian Benford, the cornerback out of Villanova. I gave this pick a B. This guy is an absolute playmaking machine. He get His hand seems to be in between the receiver and the football more often than it's not. 
18 pass breakups and seven interceptions this past season, which is a ludicrous amount to think of. 6'1", 208 pounds. He's a big dude, and he knows it. He throws that body weight around. Great job at you know just allowing a play to develop and reading that play and understanding what's going on in front of him. This guy... I mean, at worst, is going to be a really good, you know, third, fourth corner for this team and has pl has play potential to maybe even sneak his way up higher than that. This is a really good pick all the way in the sixth round here. You can lose track of his man sometimes when plays break down and things start to get messy when, like, the quarterback starts to scramble, you know, he loses his guy and things like that. Uh, but, I mean, when you're breaking down his stuff, it's, like, really nitpicky, it feels like, when I'm looking at what the scouts are saying and... I just watched some of the tape from this guy, and my goodness, does he make so many plays. I cannot believe a guy like this was graded so low, and he's somewhere in the sixth round. Now, I understand that, you know, one of the things I read about him is that he lacks top-end speed. There's concern he might get burned over the top and things like that from those faster wide receivers in the league. So be it, if that's going to be his one criticism. This is someone that, like, if cornerback doesn't work out, Maybe he ends up swapping over and playing like a safety role on the strong side. I mean, he is 6'1", 208 pounds, pretty big dude. There is a lot of potential to be kind of uncovered from this guy here. Good pick. Very good pick. Like I said, a B. Then in round number six as well, we're also looking at the punter from San Diego State. We're looking at Matt Arasia. I mean... You get the absolute best punter in the draft and probably one of the better punters who has come out of a draft class in quite some time, you know, known as the punt god. I mean, if this guy works out, you are locking down your special teams and for quite some time. The dude has an absolute boot for a leg. He can knock that thing as far as the best of them. And it, impressively enough, he does it accurately as well. So this picks an A for special teams. I mean... You can't really go wrong locking down special teams. It is the third piece of the game that gets overlooked. And, you know, when you think of some of the best teams in the league, you know, how do they win? They win in all three phases of the game, and that includes the special teams. Bill Belichick, you know, a very successful coach within that same division, has emphasized special teams his entire coaching career. You look at someone like Matthew Slater, who has been a career patriot for like 16 years now, and all he does really is special teams. This is one of those picks that if it pans out, he is a big playmaking piece on the special team, someone who could pin teams into, you know, really tough spots late in games, things like that. Love this selection. I gave it an A. Then in the fifth round, this is probably my favorite pick of the draft class. I can't believe one, he went in the fifth round and two, that the NFL, I mean, I'm talking the other 31 teams here when I say that, allowed Khalil Shakir to end up in the hands of the Buffalo Bills to catch passes from Josh Allen. If you have not seen what Shakir can do, I don't care that he came from like a Mountain West Conference team in the, you know, the Boise State Broncos. This guy is a tough tackle. He has awesome rack ability. He has some pretty awesome hands and he couples it all with 4-4-3 speed. The guy is fairly quick. I mean, he might not be the most physical specimen. He's only six feet, 196 pounds. And, uh, you know, he is, again, taking a big step in coverage coming from the Mountain West. But, I mean, the dude's highlights are nuts. I can, And you just think, okay, he's a really good prospect. And he's going to have Josh Allen throwing him the football. And the rest of the NFL teams were okay with that. I just don't understand. I mean... He doesn't have the largest catch radius, and that was something I noticed that was noted about him a lot from scouts. But, I mean, if you watch the way he plays, you'd think he does have a big catch radius with the way he can snag the football out of the air. He makes the most of the limited catch radius he has. Excellent playmaker here and so much potential upside. Like I said, I gave the pick an A, and to wrap up day number three... A B plus. I mean, this is probably one of the strongest day three groups that I've seen out of any of the draft classes I've looked at so far. I'd have to go back and check my notes on the other like 19 teams I've done so far. But like uh, from top to bottom, even their like lesser selections, like I said, I graded them out as C's just based off what I've seen from them, what I've read about them. It, it, you know, th their worst picks were some teams like best picks in day three, which is insanity. This is a really good group to start things off here. Now, going into day number two, 
Two selections, one in the third and one in the second. We'll start with the third round pick here. Terrell Bernard, the linebacker out of Baylor. I gave this one a B. Now, he is a fifth round graded talent, but when I watch him play, he feels like he, and because typically what I do is like I'll watch some of their their film or their highlights or whatever it may be, whatever it is I can find on players to kind of get a grasp on what they are. And then I read about them and I, I, I read what like the scouts are saying about them. When I looked at Terrell Bernard, I'm thinking in my head, all right, this guy was probably projected somewhere within like the fourth and the third round, but somehow he was projected in the fifth. I mean, he is a leader, never quit attitude. If you watch the way he plays, he's going a hundred miles an hour at all times and constantly like a heat seeking missile trying to get to that football. Like he is locked on and going at all times. He had a hundred plus tackles in 2019 and in 2021. And he's a very aggressive tackler at that. His aggressive tackling, though, is a little bit of a concern because with the way he does that and his aggressiveness, it's like a hit or miss. It's either he's going to make a really big tackle or he might slip up and miss. But, I mean, when he gets those tackles, they're typically big hits, and they're in really good spots for losses. I like his play style. Very aggressive. It's very fun to watch. A little bit smaller, 6'1", 224. So there is that to, to work with. But, I mean, it seems like new age linebackers, they're kind of evolving into a smaller group of guy anyway. So is it really too, too concerning? I don't know. We'd have to see. Well, you know, that's one of those things you'll only know once he actually gets on the field and starts playing there. But, like, someone like Darius Leonard, that dude plays at 215 pounds. It's, it's a very small guy per se. Uh, but overall, average coverage recognition. He's not somebody who's going to, like, make or break the passing game. But solid guy to plug in and, you know, be able to drop back in some instances when necessary. I gave this pick a B. Like I said, I thought he was going to be graded a higher talent than this, uh, but apparently he's a fifth round grade. So maybe there's some stuff that I'm just not seeing in the, in the small amount of tape that I do get to watch. But I like what I saw from him in some of his biggest moments and some of his best moments. I think it's a good pick. And like I said, it's not necessarily someone that needs to step up right away. Uh, you know, there are some solid linebackers there already in Buffalo and another player to learn and, mold, and you know, like mold behind those guys until he's ready to roll. I like the pick B for the effort. And then round two running back out of Georgia, James cook. I gave this one an a plus cuts are super impressive. If you're watching Dalvin's cooks tape, I think one of the first things that pops out, and this was the first thing that popped out to me. So it probably will for you is just his ability to cut back and make a play feet move. Like, and this was, <laughs> this is the only thing that could come to mind when I was watching his feet move. If you're a gaming nerd, like I am, Moves like Sonic the Hedgehog, the way those feet just kind of rotate and turn the entire time. He is just constantly going super fast, uh, very patient. He lets the running lanes develop in front of him, and he flies right through the hole when it's open. Th there's a lot of good to say about James Cook's play style, and the fact that Buffalo went and got a premier running back, and you know, not to knock Stingley, but for whatever reason just hasn't really worked out with him, this is a very good pick to help revitalize a running game that's been fairly absent in Buffalo. And considering where you play and the type of weather you play in, you saw what the Patriots did to them last year when the weather was on the Patriots side, per se. You need to be able to do that, too. You need to be able to hand the ball off, hand the ball off, hand the ball off in the face of some crazy weather and be a ground and pound effective team, not just rely on Josh Allen to try to cannon the ball through high winds. I, I get it. He has an arm and it's an absolute beast of an arm, but you need to be able to be effective on the ground game. And this is a guy that I could say will be that number one running back for you. And I, I'm really excited to see what he can do in an offense like this because defenses have to play for coverage against the Bills with how threatening Josh Allen's arm is. The addition now of Khalil Shakir and the other receivers that are already there, you have such a strong group offensively. This The sky's the limit for this offense at this point. I mean... If you thought the Bills were good last year, I'm starting to really understand now why the Bills are like the number one favorite in a lot of places to win the Super Bowl this year. I mean, the, the roster already, plus some of these rookie additions, it's pretty scary. I would definitely look out if you are not a Bills fan. Uh, so overall for day number two, I wrap it up with an A-, minus, two really good selections there. I'm very excited about the James Cook pick. Like I said, A-plus for that one, good selection there. And then for day number one, round one, pick number 23, <clears throat> we are talking Kair Elam, the cornerback out of, uh, I almost said Georgia, excuse me, Florida. Don't want to insult anyone. Florida, A- minus for the selection here. He has the size. He's got the length. He's got the strength. The prototype linebacker you want, or, excuse me, cornerback that you want for a press man. I mean, it rarely bites on the double moves. He does all the right things. Really strong fundamentals, instinctive. He stuffs wide receivers at the release. He brings everything to the table that you want. 
He did not necessarily put up his best game tape in 2021, and I know some teams kind of got worried about that because it felt like his play might have regressed a little bit. Uh, but Kyer Elam is just so good in coverage, and, and the way he plays... It's very fast. It's very disruptive. You know, he looks like a cornerback one when you watch his tape. Even when you're considering the fact that, like, you know, he, he took a step back in 2021 production-wise. I, I like his game. He is a little bit too grabby. That's one thing you can kind of see yourself, and scouts have noted that as well. Apparently, he also doesn't utilize his size too much in run support. That's something he's definitely going to have to be more willing to do. But... You know, this was a strong need, losing Levi Wallace in free agency for the Bills. Kyer Elam should be a good replacement for that. A- minus for the selection, A- minus for day number one. You go after a team need, you get a guy who is considered one of the better cornerbacks in the draft class, and you're replacing Levi Wallace with a potential, like, CB1 here. This is a good pick, a very good pick at that. A borderline excellent selection here based off team need and value at 23. I really, really like what they did going here. But overall, when I look at this draft class from top to bottom, like I said, a really, really good draft class from top to bottom for the Bills, man. I'm going to have to sit here. I'm going to have to settle out an A-. I just, I'm just i so impressed. It, honestly, the if you said, you know what, I think they got an A, sure. I'm nitpicking giving them an <clears throat> an A-. I've been very critical of some teams just because I, I don't like how t- – you know, a lot of people when draft grades were first coming out of the draft were just kind of throwing out A's and whatnot and, you know, F's the next day. Like, how do you even know? Have you really sat down and watched all these guys? I think that, you know, as credible as some people are in sports media, have they really taken the time to sit down and put in the legwork to really understand what each and every one of these players brings to the table? I know for a fact when I am putting these types of videos together, depending on the size of the draft class, because some teams have like 8, 9, 10, 11 picks, whatever it may be, 12, uh, I am there for a handful of hours just kind of looking at players, watching how they play, reading about the players. It takes a long time to put this all together. And so I don't like the quick, the quick grades, the quick pick grades, like whatever it is that people are throwing out the day after the draft is over. Like, I like doing this, taking a look at these guys, really seeing what they bring to the table. And again, A minus for their overall grade. It might be because I'm nitpicking, but this is an excellent, excellent draft class for the Buffalo Bills. And I'm worried as a as a fan of an AFC team, how on earth are we going to get through this team? I'm a Colts fan, and I know we beat the Bills last year. Not quite sure how it's going to happen again based off this group. We'll have to see, but my goodness, Bills fans, you got a good group here. Got a very good group here. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Have a good one.